Because when I first came here, uh, we felt that this was a small family, and Nick was a, uh, a satellite type of guy uh, in in Cosa Nostra world of uh, family strength and position and power. Nick Savello was one of the brightest guys you'd ever want to meet. Not in terms of having gone a long way through school, but, and I guess the comparison in some ways is apt, uh, like Harry Truman, uh, you know, he, he learned a lot because he read a lot. And of course, after a few times in and out, they did introduce me to him, and his name was Nick Savella. And uh, I was surprised, but you know, I had had lots of surprises during the time I was working there. I just kind of took it all in. He was a very um, polite and mannerly man. He would always stop and come over to me and ask me how my day was going. He was just a, a perfect gentleman. They sent me to the airport with a photographer to meet him as he's coming off the plane. And, um, you know, so there I am standing up there, and, and there's this one little kind of old guy. Uh, I know this will come as a shock to many people. Mr. Savella was incredibly socially conservative. Uh, he, when I was head of the ACLU, he went, I was on radio concerning uh, choice, issues of choice. And he came into the office that day and was very upset with me because he, he truly did not think I had a sufficiently developed sense of respect for life. In regards to Nick Savella and the Kansas City family, which is probably the most violent fam uh, organized crime family in the nation, uh, I mean, those people were just amazing. Uh, as far as their uh, reputation and their actions. Uh, by the time I retired, I found out Nick was one of the uh, uh, really uh, powerful people, uh, recognized people in Cosa Nostra. Jim and Tom Pendergast built a powerful political organization. During this time, Italian immigrants arrived and moved into what became known as the North End. Italian Americans, like Irish Americans, soon realized they needed a political voice. Tom Pendergast saw the value of a coalition with the Catholic Italians to wrest power from the mostly Protestant ruling class. The primary uh, facilitating factor involving the development of uh, organized crime, and specifically Cosa Nostra, was their political connections. In Kansas City, uh, we had a political machine develop, and they owned the North End. So very early on, the criminal organization here was doing work for the political machine. Uh, and they understood the value of politics. In Sicily, you have to remember, they owned everything. They were the government. So politics was in their DNA. They, they understood this. So they began working for the political bosses, and in turn, they were protected. That became open and notorious during the Pendergast era when John Lazio was the boss. They actually took over the city, took over the police department. Every immigrant population in the history of the United States has come through a period of time when they were involved in crime. Uh, that's one of the reasons Martin Scorsese produced and directed the gangs of New York about the Irish gangs. Well, what happened with the Italian Americans is just when they were coming in and they were dominating criminal enterprises, we had prohibition, and that made organized crime insanely profitable. Uh, the Chicago contact with the family up there goes way back. It goes back to the Capone era. Uh, Capone and Lazio were uh, teamed up to uh, to uh, uh, facilitate bootlegging. Uh, then later it became a, uh, a layoff uh, a bookmaking operation where Kansas City could lay off bets up to Chicago, which is a rebetting system to, uh, uh, to in ensure profit. Like Vito Corleone in the Godfather film, Nick becomes part of a band of young Turks who oppose the old line mustache Pete's. Nick's father was uh, a victim of the Black Handers. And Nick took that personally uh, and uh, didn't seek uh, the, uh, the approval 
uh, of these people. In fact, he decided to actually oppose them and was part of a group that was holding up protected gambling games. Uh, Big Jim Ballesteri was the one of the main outfit people of that era. Sicilian born, uh, Sicilian by nature, Sicilian in every manner and shape and form, uh, didn't take to this kind of uh, renegade and uh, tried to have Nick killed. Nick survived because some of his friends who had been recruited by the mob were still loyal to him. Nick Savella flees to Chicago and finds friends in the Chicago outfit. Soon a deal is struck and Nick is allowed to return. Uh, they even believe that he orchestrated the uh, famous murder of the two Charlies, Charlie Bonaggio and Charlie Gargata, who were the boss and uh, number one man at the time. A Sicilian named Tony Gizzo was the Kansas City Outfit's boss in the 1940s and 1950s. He took Nick Savella under his wing and groomed him to be his successor. Gizzo died of natural causes. Uh, Nick was the logical guy uh, and uh, got the support of Joe Filardo and some of the uh, other people and was appointed the boss. 